Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric Gill Jarhead here. Thanks for watching. I'm not milling. Battery's dying on me. It's snowing out. It's kind of cold. I got some plowing done. I got a little bit of milling done. The battery was really giving me a hard time. But I thought I would talk to you about something that I see a lot of on social media and I wanted to answer this question. A lot of people ask, can this sawmill really mill the amount of board feet per hour that the manufacturer says that it can. So my mill, the LT40 hydraulic G, it's the LT40 HD G26. It's a 26 and a half horsepower standard LT40. They didn't have wides when I bought mine. So there was no, there was no wide head folks. <laughs> so this is it, regular LT40. Well, guess what? It's rated at 550 board feet an hour. Can you really mill 550 board feet an hour on this mill? Yeah, actually you can, folks. But, and here's a big but. When Woodmiser rates this mill, Woodmiser's not rating you. They're not saying that one guy all by himself can do 550 board feet an hour on this mill over a sustained period of time. That's not what Woodmiser's saying. And I think that confuses people. I'll be honest, it kind of confused me when I first started out. I first started saw milling. I thought, well, if the mill can do 100 board feet an hour or 300 or whatever, I should be able to do that. Well, yeah, you could, but, and there's always the but, folks. It's like your car. You might have a car with a speedometer that goes to 160 miles an hour, and it might actually do that with the right person behind the wheel and at the Bonneville Salt Flats with a roll cage and a helmet and all those other things. Maybe it could do it. You probably have never done that before. Heck, you might not ever, never have done 100 miles an hour in the car you're driving today. But that doesn't mean it won't do it. That just means you haven't done it. And by the way, it's illegal, so don't go out and do it. <laughs> Seriously, it's just an analogy. So what, what is Woodmiser talking about when they say my mill can do 550 board feet an hour and I tell you that that's not rating you, it's rating the mill. Well, some will say, well, yeah, if you have the perfect logs and you're making beams and nah, 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 come on, folks. Production saw milling is a little bit different animal than what a lot of people are doing. Even people that consider themselves production saw millers are not, often not really production. Production means essentially to produce more, to make more per hour, to produce more on an hourly basis over an extended period of time. And that means that you have to limit movement. And, and quite frankly, I'm a production sawyer or was, but I wasn't anywhere near the best production sawyer out there. Guys like Magic Man and Forestry Forum could run rings around me and I still could learn from them. So I'm not trying to tell you this because I'm saying I'm the best sawyer out there. It's not the way it is. But what I'm gonna tell you is that if you're milling two by stock, which is typical for a sawmill, right? Typically you're making dimensional or nominal lumber. Nominal lumber is the actual dimensions, two inches by four inches, that's nominal. Dimensional is inch and a half by three and a half. And you really should never mill, in my opinion, one and a half by three and a half. Folks, why would you do that? SPF, spruce pine fir, is going to shrink at least a sixteenth of an inch or about a sixteenth of an inch in a two by four. So if you mill inch and a half by three and a half, well, it's gonna be a sixteenth under that in thickness and probably closer to an eighth in width. So mill it at inch and five eighths and three and five eighths, but I digress. If you're milling two by sixes and your logs are what I would call a high production log, meaning a four to 500 board foot log. So you're talking, you know, 20 plus inches 16 to 18 and a half feet long or something like that. And you're milling say inch and, inch and five eighths and, and five and five eighths for dimensional lumber plus an eighth for drying, etc. You can absolutely mill on this sawmill over 550 board feet an hour. In fact, I've, I have a video out there. I'll put it down in the description below or in the comments for you. And um, I, I showed that I could do 560 board feet an hour. In fact, I think I did uh, 280 board feet in like 20 minutes and I changed the band. <laughs> it can be done. Can you do it over an extended period? Well, sure you can. But when I was doing that particular log, I had two off bears that were phenomenal. Super awesome, folks. They kept that wood coming off the sawmill like you wouldn't believe. And I had a equipment operator that was loading logs. Every, I mean, I didn't even get my forks all the way to the ground before he was dropping, dropping a log on my forks and I was lifting it up onto the deck and away I'd go. So you, you gotta keep the band in the wood. You gotta keep humping. You gotta, you gotta be rocking and rolling on the mill and you can do it. When I, at my best production job, I milled 
uh, over 40,000 board feet for a customer. And there were days I was pumping out about 4,000 plus board feet per day. A lot of days in the 3,500 range. Now I don't mill eight hours a day, folks. I typically mill seven or six, depending on the day, the weather, etc. So if I'm milling seven hours and I'm milling 4,000 board feet, well, you could probably do the math on that. It's a lot, right? 500 times seven is 3,500 board feet. 4,200 board feet would be 600 board feet an hour. How did I do that? Well, I had logs that were 18 and a half feet long that were minimum 24 inches in diameter at one end, small or big, didn't matter. Why? Why was that important? Because they all came from a plywood mill that couldn't turn any log over 24 inches into plywood. It was too big for the mill. So they would just sell those off to anybody that wanted them. So if they got a log that was 24 inches on one end, well, let's say 25 inches on one end, and you know, 22 inches on the other end, they'd sell that, they wouldn't even bother with it. So this guy bought 150 of those logs. Some of those were in the 36 inch range. So he got these big, beautiful logs, 150 of them, a heavy duty skitter with, I think he had forks on it. I'll have to show you a picture here. And he would bring those logs, set them on my forks as soon as I was ready for it. Man, he was dropping those logs on the forks, up they would go onto the deck and he had a forklift on the other side of my sawmill and he had like between four and six off bearers so that they could have two guys off bearing and if those guys got tired two more guys could jump in and do the off bearing for them so can you do that sure it, it takes more than just good logs good equipment and good off bearers though too you got to reduce the movement that you do you've got to know if I'm gonna cut two by 12s or two by sixes or two by fours, I gotta know that I need to take my cap cut off and maybe make a flitch cut to get me the opening face that I want and roll at 90 and take a cap and maybe a flitch to get that opening face perpendicular, 90 degree angles right there without bringing out a square. So you gotta trust your sawmill. Roll it again, take the top off, and then if you can make three two by six cants, then you do it right then and there, even though you haven't taken the, the fourth cap cut off. You, you make those cuts, bang, 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 down you go, two, three, preferably not two, so three two by sixes, which would be, if you're milling them at five and five eighths, right? So you got 15 plus three times five and five eighths. You cut 17 and an eighth of an inch, and then you go down, you know, five and three quarters, so that gives you a five and five eighths inch. A eighth of that is the curve. Boom, you cut it, you do it again, boom, you cut it, now you got three five and five eighths cans. You roll that sucker up 90 degrees and you knock that thing to the deck. And you gotta know, that if you're cutting inch and five eighths, what depth you need to get to. So if your log can get you X number, then you need to know the math, right? If it's an inch and five eighths that you're making, that's inch and three quarters. So if you can get 10 of those, you do the math, 10 times an inch and three quarters minus one eighth, and you start there and boom, 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 down you go on your simple set. It comes off the deck and the next log rolls up and, and you haven't rolled that very much. The only time really you'd want to roll it anymore is if you had a little bit of weight on the bottom and you decided, you know what? Maybe I can sneak out something there and, and clean up that little wane on the bottom if you didn't take enough of a flitch cut on the top. I was never the best at some of that stuff. So I'm telling you that I'm not the best out there. I've been milling for over a dozen years, but I'm not the best out there. And yet I can tell you that I can mill over 550 board feet an hour on this mill for a sustained period for up to eight, you know, seven, eight hours and do it two, three days in a row too. If I've got the crew, the equipment, the logs, Obviously, I'm not going to do it milling one buys. At least I personally am not going to do it one, on one buys. But I might. I've never done it before, but I might. I've done over 400 board feet an hour with one buys that were eight feet long. One by sixes, eight feet long. How the heck did I do that? Well, awesome crew. I, I did like 26 logs in, in one day. And it was because the, the customer was dropping those logs on the forks for me and up they would go. I'll put that video down in the description for you to check it out. It's pretty cool. And I just show you every log, boom, 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 right? It, it was just, it was kind of insane. It was awesome. And to me, that's called rocking and rolling. So maybe I could even do it with one buys, folks. <laughs> I think it's possible. And again, I'm not the best out there. I'm not, I don't run my YouTube channel because I think I'm the best Sawyer out there. I'm not, folks. I think I'm a pretty good Sawyer. I would tell you that I've learned a lot from my own mistakes. And I've learned a lot from other YouTube channels. And I've learned a lot from Forestry Forum. And... And, and you'll hear me say that in the future. So I'm doing this because I enjoy sharing with you what I'm doing, but also I hope I help you out with something. And if I have, do me a favor, hit that like button for me. It really helps the channel out and I would really love it if you do. So thank you very much for that. Well, there you have it folks. Yep, you really can mill as much as the mill is rated to mill as long as 
you, you do the right things in order to do it. You just got to understand how it's done and, and go out there and do it. Now, I'm going to tell you that a lot of the guys that I've seen that say you can't do this, they often talk about what they're doing. And I think, I think really what they're saying isn't you can't do this, it's I'm not going to do this. What I see a lot is a guy will say, I'm not gonna trust my side supports. I'm gonna roll my log, I'm gonna cut the top off, and then I'm gonna roll it 180 degrees, and I'm gonna cut the bottom off, and then I'm gonna roll it 90 degrees, and I'm gonna put a square up against there, and I'm gonna make sure it's perfectly square before I take my next cut. Well, that's great. I'm sure you make great cants, and I'm sure they're perfectly square, but you just took twice as long to ever get to a cant than I will. So, it isn't that you can't mill that fast. It's that maybe they're just not doing it. A lot of guys are going to measure things over and over and over and over and over again. And, I, and, and if you go back and you watch the videos that I did with Kevin Bales, you may notice that Kevin's not pulling his tape measure out a whole lot and he sure as heck ain't pulling a square out. Now here's a guy that was milling 800 hours per year. That's a lot of milling, folks. He's got over a million board feet under his belt. He's been milling about the same amount of time I have, but he went full time. I never did that. He's not pulling a square out. He's hardly pulling a tape measure out and he's rocking and rolling and he's getting the job done. And he and I've talked a lot. He's actually milled over the rated amount that his mill's supposed to do as well. He's got an LT40, same mill as mine, only his is a wide. So Kevin's done it as well. I know lots of guys that have. I talked to him on forestry reform. And that's where I learned how to do production milling. I've done videos in the past, you know, production sawyer versus a hobby sawyer. And some guys get offended by that. And guys, don't get offended by that. Right now, I would say I'm a hobby sawyer. I'm milling these D logs for myself and I'm in no hurry to do it. If I don't get back to milling today, it's not a big deal. I got some wood here drying, it's fine, it'll dry fine. It's not that big of a deal, and I don't have to produce any more than I'm already producing. So that's what a hobby sawyer is. I'm just doing it for my personal use. I don't have to produce more. If I was out here milling as a production sawyer, I would have to produce more. The production sawyer, you can't say, well, I sell my lumber, but I only produce 1,000 board feet a day and call yourself a production sawyer. I'm sorry, but you're not. Not unless you're doing that 1,000 board feet in two hours or three. Can you be a production sawyer milling by yourself? Yes, you can. I do know guys that do it, and maybe you're one of them. You're not going to mill as much per hour as a guy like me with a crew, right? It's not going to happen. Without a crew and equipment, you're not going to do it. However, you may be knocking out a lot of lumber by yourself in a short period of time, and you may be doing it in a very efficient manner so that you can sell that lumber. And then, yeah, I would say you're a production sawyer. Can you mill greater than the rated speed of your mill? I bet you could if you had a crew in the equipment because you've done it enough. You do it for a living. And I guess the difference is production sawyers are people that not just do it for a living, but they're usually doing it for somebody else and they've got to pump it out. Now, I will tell you, of course, guys like Robert over there at Hobby Hardwoods, he's a production sawyer and that guy produces. Now he's got an LT70, so it's a little easier to produce more by yourself than it is, say, with an LT40 you walk beside. But he's definitely a production sawyer, and he's producing hardwoods. So I'm not saying that a, that a guy who runs a mill all by himself isn't a production sawyer, but if you watch what he does, everything he does is thought out ahead of time, and he's not wasting time on a lot of movement. And I think if there's anything I could say about how to produce what these mills are designed to produce, it's to cut out movement find ways to reduce the time it takes to do everything. Because you can make just as good lumber, sometimes twice as fast, if you just cut out all the extra movement and extraneous stuff and tape measuring and checking your square, trust your mill. Get it aligned right and trust the mill. Know how to check it. Treat your mill right, it's gonna do the job for you. So folks, that's all I got for today. I hope that all makes sense for you. Hopefully I haven't upset anybody. <laughs> I will absolutely drop another video right here for you to check out. And I really appreciate your being here today. So y'all have a great one. The old jar hit out.